So in this video, we're going to map nest parts into our sheet. My table is 5 foot by 10 foot long. So you can adjust your job size to whatever the allotted steel size you have. We'll see how it changes, but for this we'll just keep it 60 by 120. So to get a new part, you can go File, Open Part, New Part, but if you just right click here, go New Part, it'll bring you into the last file that you pulled out of. So I just created this little test file here, this DXF. You then pick whatever file you want. You can import it into SheetCam. It will either land here, if you choose here, it'll go here. So this is helpful if you're nesting a full sheet and you know this is already full, you just click there and part will drop right in the center for you. But generally you just choose right there, uh, use points for drilling, you can leave that checked. And colors as layer names, that just depends on however you want to do it, but why not. So now you have your part in there, you can then take, click the nesting button, move the part freely. So would you like to make a duplicate, right click, you can go copy. Copy and duplicate are different. If you create a cut file for a duplicate, it will mirror the same cut file. So if you are going to cut multiple parts the same, multiple duplicate, and you can just start landing them wherever you would like. So if you want to delete one, select it, delete, delete. So another nice tool is the array, array parts. Number of columns, columns are up and down, number of rows are side to side. So I can go five columns, two rows. Part spacing, mm, two tenths of an inch, and hit OK. And there we go. So basically, you can fill up the entire sheet or do as many as you need. So just delete that, you delete the whole part, it'll delete all of its duplicates. New part, and this guy. Uh, import it right there. Use drawing name for this job name. Sure. So, from here, click your nesting, click, drag it. You can then rotate your part by using the greater than, less than symbol, basically the two arrows that are just right above your space bar on your keyboard, and you can spin parts to whichever you would like. So you can also mirror the image. So mirror X, mirror Y, this is a poor drawing to mirror. So import another part, new part, uh, I'll bring this back in there. Uh, I have to go over here. Okay, so from there, this part is selected, mirror X, mirror Y, so kind of a nice little feature there, but you can then bring everything you're going to need in as needed. Don't want it to land on top of B. All right, so got some parts in there, and let's choose an operation. So. Basically, you know what steel you're going to cut this out of. Let's just say it's quarter inch, and you want to cut that out. So you have this selected. Go over here, and all right, let's go pole base. We're going to pick an operation. So operation, outside offset. You generally want to use the outside offset for anything unless you're going to basically cut something out of an existing part like tube or vice versa and we'll go over that later. So outside offset, pick your layer, color 7 and sheet cam will automatically detect with an outside offset to cut around the perimeter and then on the interior <clears throat> of all the inside cuts. You need to pick your tool. So depending on what plasma, you know, power unit you have, vice versa, you can go 85, 105, no big deal. All the tools are automatically loaded. So we're going to go quarter inch steel. To get the best cut quality, you're going to want to use the lowest 
allotted amperage. So, for example, 45 amp will cut up to quarter inch steel readily. Um, 65 amp will go up to oh, what do we got here? 5 eighths. So, pretty straightforward there, but best cut quality you're going to have 45 amp quarter inch steel. It automatically update the operation. Everything in here is basically preset. So, lead in type you can go just generally keep that normal unless you're going to do some bigger thick steel. You can go ramp, wiggle, but generally even then normal works about the best. So it'll set uh, basically the curve offset, feed rate, pierce delay. Uh, pierce delay is the amount of time allotted for the plasma to physically pierce through the metal. Pierce height is the height above the table or material that it is going to pierce at. So it'll pierce this high for that long and then travel down to the cut height at 150 inches a minute, cut height 60 thousandths, pause at end of cut half a second, all that's fairly straightforward. So good to go there. Overcut. This is something that you could use. Generally you don't have to, especially with anything under quarter inch, half inch. It's not not really necessary, but it is the total distance as the torch travels around, it will then bypass the allotted. So if you had this as two tenths of an inch, it would travel past where it started two tenths of an inch. Reverse cut direction, you are always going to want to have that check because plasma cuts the best going counterclockwise on the inside, clockwise on the outside. So sheet cam, command CNC, they do a really nice job of working together. Holes, um, I need to, holes basically what that does, and you can see the operation here on circles smaller than one and a half inches, set feed to 65%. So it'll slow down the travel path in a hole. This is not a hole, this is an oval, so it will not do it on that automatically. You can move this to a different layer <clears throat> if need be and physically slow down the operation as well. Soft pierce, you are only going to have this function if you have the HYT connect, but quarter inch 100 percent is just fine so lead in arc and then i will change this to tangent so you can see the difference and i will in and out lead out is not a necessary thing on plasma lead in is very nice because as when the torch leads in it will leave a hole so you have your hole in basically your scrap side of your material torch travels around comes back it will overcut two tenths of an inch and lead out. You do not need a lead out with plasma. If you wanted to change the operation, because sheet cam will save the last setting, so if you used on the last job a lead out, you then need to physically click it to none and it will update that. So, fairly straightforward. And let's bring something in here with a hole in it. So access hole cover. Bring that in. All right, there's some good holes. So basically, now that I am on my little cursor selector, select that, bring an operation, 45 amp, same plate of steel, quarter inch, 45 amp. I want to use holes. I do not need a lead out and overcut's not necessary. You really don't need that a whole lot. So basically, as this lies, that being blue, it will then, the feed rate will be 65% throughout the circle. And as you can see, the cut direction is counterclockwise, clockwise around the outside. And that's just what we want. So these are some fairly small holes. Um, Let's see what else we got here. New part. Pull learning tool. Repeat final. Let's just open that up. There's a bigger hole there. <clears throat> right click, measure, just to see exactly how big it is. And six tenths of an inch. And measuring, right click, and measuring. Bring an operation into that. Select part, select the operation and <clears throat> I've already got everything all set up. So as you see, torch will fire, lead in, come around 
digital torch height will turn off towards the end of the cut and the torch will shut off and boom you have a nice hole right there so fairly straightforward now to move that to nest that part in you just click drag and bring it to wherever you would like so that is basically in a nutshell how to nest parts and create simple operations.